Hey, welcome back to video number two in Missing Link series on its action framework, where we give you a framework for you to deliver a presentation to help you move an audience to action. So today we're here to discuss step number one in that process, which is to give your audience a reason to care. Spoiler alert, they don't. Right? Your job is to create an itch that provides a scratch. You need to understand that you have to, before you can sell them anything, you need to buy their attention. And that's what you're doing upfront in the presentation. And I promise you, you're always selling something, even if it's just an idea that's inside your head. So here's what you need to understand. Every single audience you will ever present to arrives in the audience in their seat with a gas tank, a give a shit tank. And the bad news is when you get on stage, they have very little shits to give about what you're saying. They may care that you're there, but they might not care about you know, what you're there for, what you think is important. And that's what you got to do early. At the beginning of your presentation, you got to fill this tank up for them. And your job is to get off stage before that tank runs empty. Right? You, if I buy five minutes of attention at the beginning of a presentation, well, then that's how long I can deliver a message. If I, if I bought 10 minutes of attention and I speak for eight minutes, my audience will think, ah, oh, sure, I could listen to that guy speak forever. Amazing. But if I buy 10 minutes of attention and I speak for 12 minutes, they'll be like, oh, come on. But that person never shut up. What's going on? Spoke far too long. That's the difference it can make. How long should your presentation be? Just less than your tank is able to fill. And a lot of that is dependent on one of two factors, either how important the topic is or how important you can make the audience feel that the topic is. And that's what we've got to cover here. Now, the problem that we face here in most presentations is that we've been sold down the river uh, by a lot of specialists, especially sales trainers, is they'll say to you things like, don't sell solutions or don't sell features, sell benefits. And I understand this thinking, but to go to something that I've shared in a previous video, let's say I was trying to sell a, a ambulance here and I wanted to sell you a ride on an ambulance. Uh, we covered this in my elevator pitch video, which I'll link to, but uh, uh, I, I wanna go into that now because it's very, very relevant to the structure. So let's say I own an ambulance and I want you to ride in my ambulance. I ask you, hey, 100 bucks, you can come ride my ambulance. Are you up for it? Huh? Huh? What are you saying? What are you saying? Let me tell you about the features, flashing lights. It's got like cool, like Pirelli tires and all, all these features like, no, nah, I don't need it. Ah, oh, the benefits, the benefits is it can get through traffic lights, no problem. It's got trained paramedics inside it, blah, 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 blah. You still don't need it. But if I can like reach through the camera and like pull out a kidney or something, you're like, ah, oh, why'd you do that? Ah. I say like, do you want to ride my ambulance now? You're like, hell yeah, I do. Cool, 500 bucks. Cool, money is no object. Uh, what I did is I'd stopped worrying about the ambulance. The ambulance was unimportant. And what I worried about was the accident. You need to understand your job when you get on stage is to sell the accident. And there is always an accident. If there is no accident, there is no need for your ambulance, right? There's no need for you to be there. So if you cannot figure out why your audience should care about a topic, that's not the topic for you. But if you can, if you can figure out what the accident is, then you're in great shape. Because if you sell the accident, the ambulance will sell itself. And that's a great place for you to be. Now, I want to give you an example of where I saw this years ago. I was invited, myself and Sam, the managing director of Missing Link, were in Edinburgh to, on behalf of TED to train their TED fellow speakers. Uh, at that particular event, there was a uh, person by the name of Garrick Israelian that was presenting there. Uh, and he, it was an incredible event. Uh, he was, uh, I mean, he's a great a great leader in his field. And he was there to talk about astrophysics stuff, but also about gases and space and the telescope and all of these elements. And so this guy comes onto the stage and, you know, he said, good day to you, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Garrick Israelian. And, and, and he kind of gets into his presentation. I'm an astrophysicist. He's got a, a quite a strong accent and he delivers into his presentation. Now he starts talking and he gets very excited and animated about these gases. Like he's got like this in space, there's like a Hüttenflügen nine. And when it's mixed with, you know, hypotenuse six and only through that thing, it has like seven comes out of it. And I was sitting there and I was struggling to listen, you know, and you're trying to hold back from going into, into like that submarine mode where you're just like, Pum -pum. and you know, you're staring, you're staring but like, you, you know, it's there, but all of a sudden, like the lights just go out and you're just like, oh, I'm lost, I'm lost. And I was trying everything I could not to be submarining, you know, to dropping down below my attention, sitting comfortably in my seat. 
And then I looked over and Jeff Bezos was sitting like three or four seats away from me. And I could see him slump down, take out his phone and he had a little sneaky peek. And I was like, oh, yes. In fact, incidentally, at that event, uh, I had a really cool interaction with Jeff Bezos where he signed my Kindle and he taught me something about business, which I'll also link to up above. It's a video well worth watching. But I thought to myself, oh, that's pretty cool. If the billionaire founder of Amazon can tap out of this presentation, then I've got an excuse. And that's what I did. I went comfortably into my submarine mode and I kind of sat there to the end. But as our hero, Garrick, is finishing up his presentation, he's getting to the point and he uh, uh, you know, get, comes to the end of his message. And he talks about this telescope he's built and he says, and you know, ladies and gentlemen, that's how we will be able to prove to you whether there is life on another planet. Thank you very much. And he walks off the stage and everyone's like, wait, what? Lead with that. That's where you start. Right. If it was me, and funny enough, he kind of did a little bit, but it was so like subtle and things. Like I would have made a big deal about that. I would have gone onto the stage. Now this was in 2011. I would have gone onto the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Good day to you. My name is Garrick Israelian, and I'm an astrophysicist, and I'm excited to be with you here on this day on this TED stage in TED, you know, 2021. Because today, I want to answer a question for you, a question that we have asked since the first time we looked up at the heavens. And that question, my friends, is, are we alone? And today, I want to give you a categoric answer to that question. The answer to that question is, but you see, I'm getting ahead of myself, because this journey actually began on this very stage to an audience much like you 10 years before, where I explained about a telescope that I had built that and then he goes into the story. Now I care. Now this person has promised to explain to me how he's building a telescope that will answer that question. I want to understand this. So by getting it, getting your audience there at the beginning, you make it a lot easier. And there's a famous quote, a friend of mine, uh, well, not a famous quote, a famous quote, a friend of mine went to war with, his name is Mark Keating. He runs a company called Sales Guru. And he says, you know, one of the problems that people always say to people is that, that quote that says, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. And like, he's like, why would you ever want to take a horse to water? You're like, bro, do you want some water? Like, come, come, come. Are you, are you, are you in the market for some? Come on. Like, you cannot, you, it's just insane. Like, if the horse isn't thirsty, you can't do anything with it. Your job at the beginning of a presentation is not to try to take the horse to water. That's ridiculous. Your job is to find thirsty horses or better still, make the horse thirsty. So that's where we want to start with your presentation today. That is the job of the, the reason to care section of your presentation. And let me tell you, if this is a 10-minute presentation, you're spending three minutes here, right? You're spending a meaningful amount of time getting your audience to care. Because when you fill that gas tank, you have bought their attention for the next part of your presentation, which we're gonna get into in the very next video. 